Welcome back you filthy exiles. So this is going to be a little bit of a different type of video because I get the question all the time. How do you increase your defenses uh, when you're delving in particular? Because I obviously play delve. I exercise some pretty tanky shit uh, when I'm doing that. So uh, anyway, I thought I'd share some tips to, uh, to look at to potentially include in your build. Now this isn't just for delve. This could be for a number of different things that you play in the game. But there are some certain mechanics that I always like to look at introducing into my builds to be able to mitigate damage. And so we'll talk about these, I guess, like tier by tier. And uh, anyway, let's get into the video and let's talk about how you can increase your defense on your build. Okay, so the obvious defense that I like playing on most of my characters is max block. Now, how do you achieve max block? The conventional way of achieving max block, if we click the right button is generally to move up into something like glancing blows and in fact let's go grab a character where we have exactly that okay so this character is my uh detonate dead character that everybody's seen from this league and this does use glancing blows now the way that glancing blows works for anyone who's uninitiated to it basically you glancing blows it gives you double the amount of uh attack block and double the amount of spell block um and there's a compromise to that. You take 65% of the blocked um, blocked hits as damage, right? So this is one way to get a sort of max block setup working. Now, this particular build works really well because Aegis Aurora allows for 2% of armor when you block to be regenerated as energy shield. And this is a CI based character, which means that it's chaos immune and I only have energy shield and I stack a pretty good chunk of armor on this build. That's the conventional way to get max block working. Now, the input to this to do glancing blows, you'll generally take, you know, these shield block nodes here, Sanctuary, and you'll generally take these energy shield nodes up here and maybe a little bit more block as well on these nodes here, and then 1% chance to block attack damage, and then the obvious is you get additional block from Aegis Aurora of, of 6%, and then basically you run Tempest Shield in the build wherever I've got that currently sitting. Now, this is one way to play max block characters. However, there's a couple of other different ways to play it as well. And let's have a look at my other character, which uses a, another form of max block um, in order to achieve an, a similar result. Okay, so this is my poisonous concoction character that I'm currently working on. Now, this does block a little bit differently compared to my other tunes, and it doesn't get to 75% max block. Uh, it actually gets to about 50% and 26% spell block. And then when I pop my flask, I get to 48% my Rumi's Concoction. This is a uh, Pathfinder, so it's built around flasks and flask uptime in effect. So the other way that you can achieve a similar type of max block is by basically playing first style combatant, which basically means that 25% of your attack block is reduced, 25% of your spell block cap is reduced, so it's 50-50. But you get 2% spell block um, for every 1% of overtack overcapped attack damage that you so attack damage block. Which basically means that you get a 2 for 1 deal, though your cap is reduced, so it's a 50-50 chance of getting hit. This is another way that you can make block work if, for example, you're playing a gladiator or a pathfinder or something of that nature. It's a little different. It does work on the marauder and things like that as well. Um, not always the preference uh, that I sort of go for on builds. Uh, generally, I like to play full, uh, you know, your glancing blows block, but this is another way to do it. And there's actually a third way that you can achieve block as well, or a max block setup, which I like to refer to as full block. So basically, you don't take any damage at all from the block, um, and you have a 75 75 or close to uh, chance to get to full block. So let's have a look at a character that does that as well. Okay, so this is version number three of block, basically. So you can achieve block or max block a different way. And the way that you do that is actually through stacking something called replica reckless defense. And basically you can get that between, you can get it to roll as like a 4% chance to block spell damage or a 4% chance to block attack damage. But the benefit of doing this type of build is that you can fully mitigate all block damage all together and basically get to like 75, 75. Now this one wasn't quite like there. I was working on scaling it, but I got to like 83% total block and the Tempest Shield was pretty low as well. 
But it's just an example of what you can do. And basically from that point, you then focus on taking, you know, spell block wherever you can take it. You can use, um, you know, small clusters to get the spell block as well. You get additional spell block, temper shield, uh, pretty much anything that you can find that gives you a spell block. And then you stack replica repl uh, reckless defenses. And I'm pretty sure a couple of leagues ago, or maybe I think it was last league or the league before, I put out a Vortex Occultist build that did true block or full block this is one way to do it. It's not as efficient. Really, really hard to get it to 75, 75. But this is a third thing that you can look at doing if you wanted to mitigate damage. Now, if you run Purity of Elements, you can run Replica Reckless Defense all day long. It has no downside. And you can just stack the shit out of blocks. And what's the price of Replica... Um, uh, sorry, Replica Reckless Defenses? Uh, like 5C. It's dirt cheap. So this is one other option that you could exercise if you wanted to like max out block. Uh, there are other things that you can do to get block as well. Like if you're playing a, um, a character that, you, that uses Skin of the Lords, then you could actually get a roll on Skin of the Lords for, you know, a versatile combatant or something like that and or Glancing Blows. And that's another source that you could look at and another really good piece of armor that you could look at basically getting max block stats from. These are just some tips of how you can get to max block basically. And then beyond that, you know, if you're looking at, like, block as a defense stat, then you can unlock the Syndicate Crafts for block, and then basically you can craft it onto your armor prefixes, suffixes in here, and basically buff up your armor and things like that. If you're looking for block on your actual gearing as well, then you can find it. So you can get it on shields, and you can get it on uh, chest pieces, I'm pretty sure, from memory as well, because you can bench craft it. So these are just a couple of examples of what you can do to basically you know, amp up your ability to max out your block. Um, and it's not exhaustive. There's other things that you can do, but this is what I generally do when I'm playing a max block character. Okay, so next stat that we have to focus on, stuns. So stuns for anyone who plays Delve can be just catastrophic and can absolutely wreck you. The other thing is if you're playing a caster like this, for example, where, like, you want to be able to stand on an enemy and just absolutely rip face without getting stunned constantly, stuns will shut you down. Hence why they have nodes in the tree around, you know, uh, practical application, where 25% chance to ignore stuns while casting, because it can just piss you the hell off. And you can be in the middle of casting something and be like, God damn it, um, you know, I can't cast because I'm getting stunned. Now... Basically, if you're playing a Jug, this isn't an issue because the Jug has the advantage of having uh, this node down here. Where are you? Unstoppable. Basically, it means you can't be stunned right. However, not every Ascendancy has this. So, how do we get around this for other different types of builds? Well, the obvious thing to do is you can get crafts on your items, like in this case, um, where you can get Implicits on here, which I'm pretty sure is a Searing Exarch Implicit, which basically gives you a chance to avoid being stunned, right? So that, that's a possibility. You can also have it crafted onto your boots as well. Um, and that's one other way to get around stun. The other way that you can get around being stunned, if you can reach it, is by having Unwavering Stance, but then you lose Evasion. This isn't a problem if you're not playing a character that basically can... Get, that doesn't evade so if you're not a you know evasion character max dodge whatever you want to call it um you're all g on this however there are actually actually some new gems in the game which make this a lot better to get around now which are quite expensive at the moment but uh yeah let's grab them and have a look at them and so yeah i had them on the other screen over here where you rumble for this one uh, so we look at Immutable Force um, and Blood Notch Crimson Jewel, right? So basically what a new Immutable Force does is it gives you a 500 to 1000% increased stun and block recovery. Now, you see this as a pain in the ass stat that rocks up as like a rando whatever on your boots or on your armor or on your rings and stuff like that. And you always think like, what a stupid thing to have on an item. Like, why would you need stun and block recovery? It's actually a really good stat. I use it in block builds in particular. So this one does, I think, have block on it somewhere, I think. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure that one out. Um, 
yeah, anyway, so the, basically I use it on my flask, so you can get it rolled on your flask. In this case, I have a really bad example of where I haven't got it on my flask, but I generally get block recovery on my flask. Um, and then I'll basically, I won't necessarily look for it in here. There are nodes in the tree that allow for it as well. So if we type in block recovery, you can get things that allow you to have block recovery. Um, so 4% increased stun and block recovery per fortification, which can be pretty useful. Um, otherwise, Tetsudo, um, or test, Testudo, oh god. My pronunciation is bad on a Sunday. Um, you can get increased block recovery here, which I'm actually using on my Pathfinder at the moment. Um, up to, what's that, 90, 120% block recovery, uh, stun and block recovery, or block recovery alone. Uh, so there are sources of where you can get it in the tree. You can also get it from the Staff Mastery as well. Different things like that, depending on the synergies and the builds that you're playing. It's less so on this side. There is a little bit here than it is on this side of the tree because you tend to play like max block characters as like, you know, melee sort of tunes and things like that. However, either way, you can pick up these jewels now and they're a little bit expensive. Um, and then basically you get 500 to 1000% increased stun and block recovery, which means that you don't really take any, you don't get stunned and your block automatically resets. Think of block recovery the way that I think of block recovery is you get hit you have to sort of recoil back and there's a tick time between when you can block again and so this negates that effect so it doesn't give you an absolute guarantee that you will always block again because you have a chance that you won't block but it'll mean that you can reload and get ready to block again and on top of that with stun it just means that stuns basically have almost no effect on you and the added advantage of that is if you're in an area like in delve which tends to be lower down then you get 40, 40 to 60% of the damage that you take from stunning hits back as life recovered. So the bigger the hit, the more life that you take back and you know, so on, so on. So this is another way that you can get around, I guess, stuns and blocks. Um, the other alternative that you can run on your boots is you can also get an enchant on your blue boots and I'll show you what that looks like now. Okay, and so on your boots, you can get 80%, so this is max roll, so you can get 80% chance to avoid being stunned if you've killed recently. And then finally, you've also got it in the Pantheon as well, if I can ever hit the right button. Um, and if you get Soul of the Brian King, then obviously you can get stun and block recovery here. And you cannot be stunned if you've been stunned or blocked, uh, or if you've blocked a stunning hit in the past two seconds. And so this is another way that you can sort of negate the impact of block as well. Oh, sorry the impact of being stunned and also sort of um, increase your ability to counter and block um, further to that. So this is just some tips on how to max out your stun and block recovery so that basically if you don't have stun immunity or then you can basically get avoid stun entirely um, or you can basically uh, recover from stun almost instantaneously so you don't even have to dodge or you don't have to stop stuns or be immune to stuns you simply take the stun and it has no effect on your character, essentially. The other side of this is block recovery is really useful. If you are playing a max block char character, then it means that you've got a higher probability that your block's going to be a lot more effective if you're getting hit by a lot more sources of damage. And that tends to happen when you're lower down in delve where you're just completely inundated by enemies around you. And that basically gives you a huge defensive advantage at the end of the day. Okay, so the next defensive layer that I sort of look at in my builds, uh, predominantly in my Delvers, is to negate critical strikes. So critical strikes are extremely problematic when you verse things like Crystal King, you're in Delve, and like one second you're alive, and then bammo, you just get clapped, and you just one-shot dead. Um, it's in particularly bad in biomes in Delve where you have like 374% crit multi and like a hundred percent crit chance or 80 percent increased crit chance from enemies or whatever it might be and basically you walk down and you're just like oh my god like run for the hills i have to divert and go down another thread of delve anyway you can get around this it's pretty easy actually so there's a few sources of this the first of which is actually the setup that i have in my um dead, no, dead build so we use veridi's veil and why would we use veridi's veil okay 
So, take no damage from critical strikes if you have a ring, a uh, magic ring in your left slot. So, basically, what that means is you switch your magic ring to the left slot, and essentially, I'm crit immune at this stage. So, basically, I just won't take any damage from crits. Um, and this is really useful, and one of the reasons why this build is extremely good down in Delve, and especially with pushing lower down, crit tends to be a bigger problem. And so this is one really good way to get around it. So this is one way that you can negate crit, but there are two others that I'll run you through as well. So let's have a talk about those. Okay, so the other like clean cut obvious way, and this is my shield crush jug for anyone who hasn't seen this build at this stage, um, is brass stone. So take no extra damage from critical strikes. So you don't get as many great stats off this item as what you might with other different builds. However, this really amps up your defense because you just don't take any crit damage at all. So basically, you don't need to worry about crit. And it's extremely useful. Um, yeah, and you'll see most of my builds that go down and delve that are life base uh, in particular. They use this particular item because it just gets around it all together. However, there is one other way or a couple of other ways that form into one way that you might be able to also get around. Uh, negating crit without this strategy or without using a Viridi's Veil. Okay, so this is my uh, my Blazing Salva character that I was working on last week. So one that one thing that really baffles me is why people don't play these Watcher's Eyes more often. So this actually has 48% reduced extra critical strike uh, or extra damage from critical strikes while affected by determination. This is one of the easiest additional sources of crit immunity that you could get, which basically means that you can run any old big chungus armor, right? 2,000, 1,700, whatever you want to run. Um, and for, for any of the stats that you want to run it for, you could literally run Watcher's Eye, uh, a prism, a Watcher's Eye with this roll on it, and then also run Sanctum of Thought. This basically gets you almost to max crit immunity. Now, if you wanted to push that over the edge just a slight bit, and this shield doesn't have it, you could get a shaped shield with increase uh, with no extra day or you know percentage damage not taken from critical strikes or whatever as well. So this is a third method that you could completely nullify the effects of crit. Now, funnily enough, crit is just one of the easiest ways that you'll die. You'll just be consistently running through the game and then bam, done. This, these strategies can sort of get around that entirely, so you don't have to worry about the pain of dying to critical strikes. But those are my three key tips for critical strike um, defense layering. Okay, so the other thing that you guys will also see in most of my builds, and I won't go into anything crazy here, well I will show you one example of absolute insanity with, uh, with this strategy, is uh, reservation over cap. So, you get 75% is your base reservation cap, right? However, when you do things like delve, you take a ton more elemental damage than what you might do when you're doing mapping, which is why delve at like, you know, let's say 350 to 500 is extremely brutal because you take absolutely tons of critical strike damage. This build gets around that. All of my builds generally follow the same suit. So I have my fire res overcapped here, uh, my cold res is slightly overcapped, and my lightning resistance is overcapped at eighty percent. You can push this up, and if you can afford it, you can run purity of elements and melding of the flesh, and then basically that takes your highest cap at the cost of seventy or whatever it is resistance. If you can continue to overcap, then it takes that and sets your cap at you know whatever your highest cap is. So in this case. If I could sustain everything else and get the resistances up, then I could get my, you know, melding of the flesh into this and then basically push my fire res up to what, like 87%, something like that. And once you get, and then that will mean that all of your resistances are overcapped at 87%. Most builds that go down in low depth delve do exactly this. But they go one step further. And I'm about to show you what the lowest delver does on POE Ninja, which is Incredibly expensive, but also incredibly cool. And the reason why overcapping reses is so ridiculously important in Delve, and also is one of the best defense stats that you could possibly sort of engage when you're playing the game. Okay, so currently on the ladder, this guy is like second lowest depth of like 4,000 something in Delve. 
Now, he doesn't have any particularly ridiculous gear, like the obvious is a mage blood, you know, no figure. And the obvious reason for this is it just fixes builds, right? So, mage blood when you're overcapping reses and going down in low depth delve, and a lot of people ask me about low depth delve, you realistically need a mage blood at that point to push like a thousand plus, because it means that you can completely overcap your reservations. Now, this gets pretty crazy, this build, because he does use Immutable Force, Blood Notch. He basically uses everything, and he uses Sublime Vision, which basically allows for all other auras, but Purity of Fire are disabled, and then 30% cold and damage are taken as fire. And then you'll be trying, be understanding where I'm going with this very shortly. So basically, his reservations are completely overcapped against fire. So everything here converts all of his damage to fire. So his helm, it converts physical damage to fire. It converts fire, a fire damage is recouped as life, which is insane. Uh, Dawnbreaker, which is really popular with deep delvers for the last few leagues. He has 20% uh, cold damage taken as fire, 20% lightning damage taken as fire, 20% physical damage taken as fire. And you can basically get the gist of what's happening here. Also in his chest, 40% of damage is taken as fire damage. And now he's got fire damage completely overcapped using Sublime Vision. And then 30% of cold lightning, uh, cold and lightning damage is taken as fire. So the reason why he can survive in low depth delve is he's also got a Ruby Flask, which gives you 25% increased effect on, on, on top of 70% increased effect, which also gives you 20%, I think, less fire damage taken as a default and then over caps your uh, or, or caps your reses out on fire res again and then basically you're over capped at 90 percent fire res and then all your damage is being converted to fire and then you're recouping all of that fire damage back as life this build is incredibly expensive this is like mirrors levels of investment however this is why this build's extremely powerful Basically, this defense layer, it takes overcapping to the next level and it converts all other sources of damage to one type of elemental that's uh, elemental resistance type that's overcapped. So you only take like 10% damage and then you basically regenerate that 10% damage back as part of your life pool. And then that just offsets the incoming damage with the damage that's recouped as life. That's basically the advantage of overcapping. And so this is an extreme example of where this is just insane. And you can look up Morph Pixels on, um, on PoE Ninja. Um, but it's just absolutely nuts. Um, and so this guy, he would go down the delve and just absolutely blast through everything and take no damage. But for those of us who can't afford it, overcapping reses can be achieved in multiple different ways. Brass Dome does it. You can craft it onto your shield, um, which is a really good source of it. Leadership's price allows for it as well, and there's other various sources such as implicit crafts on your items that give you plus one to resistances. They also added in new nodes that allow for it as well. So if we can find one up here, uh, where are you? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. So like reservation mastery now, one percent to all elemental resistances if you've reserved both life and mana. So there's different ways that you can achieve it, but overcapping your resistances super super important. And that's actually going to keep you alive a lot longer when you're down in Delve and in particular in maps or even when you're versing bosses. Now, is that build that I just showed you, would it be good at Ubers? I don't know. Ubers is a skill check. So uh, it could be good. It could be terrible. Um, yeah, I haven't played that type of build. I've played, obviously, my Blazing Salvo build. Um, and yeah, like it could be viable. It might be not. But anyway, this is another way to mitigate... Um, damage taken to your tomb as well okay so the last thing that i'll go through is actually one of my favorite things to do in builds and it's just life regeneration seriously like we don't give enough uh respect to life regeneration in the game so a couple of ways that i always do so generally you'll see in a lot of my builds these days i actually run an arrogance setup and so i'll have where is it in this one ah here we go so Arrogance and Vitality is really, really useful. The reason why is when you reserve uh, aura with Arrogance, you get 23% increased aura effect at like maximum, right? Probably 24% once you max it out or 25%. Now, 
Why is that important? Well, it increases the amount of life that you regenerate. So there's a compromise here. With all things defense-wise, there is some type of compliment, compromise. I lose a tiny bit of health. Now, on a character like my RF Jug from Last League, for anyone who has obviously followed this build, it's extremely tanky. The reason why it's extremely tanky is for two reasons. It has a shitload of armor, like, let's, let's be real. And the fire res is at 88%, so it's just an absolute behemoth, like, it's, it's ridiculous. However, the other thing that makes it really strong is it cycles between 2200 to nearly 4000 life regeneration per second, and I only have a pool of 3,875 uh, life. So I basically just automatically regenerate my whole life pool instantaneously. And then you tack on a progenesis, which was in here before, and it's on my other character at the moment. Then basically this character is borderline immortal. And that means that you can just face tank most things, if not everything, less potentially ubers. Um, and this does everything that I do in every other build, which is crit immunity with brass dome and everything else in between. So, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of an investment into this character, but it was pretty achievable. Anyway, it's a great example of where we use, you know, things like uh, reserving life for vitality. You can do the same for clarity. If you're having mana issues, actually, it's a really good sort of way to be able to sustain mana-based characters. However... Basically, things that I look for when I'm doing life regeneration on my gear. Um, so you'll notice I have like flat life regeneration and then everything has increased life regeneration rate. And I try and go for like T1 rolls or T2 rolls. So that's like 18 to like 22, 23% life regeneration rate. And then basically I did have switch out boots on this, but I don't have them anymore. And basically uh, immortal flesh. There's a whole heap of items that do this. This particular build, one of the reasons why it's so powerful is I used what nobody else was using on this at the time, which is Surging Vitality, which every four seconds regenerate 10% of life over one second, which is why I constantly cycle huge amounts of regeneration. Now, with armor-based characters, you can actually do this on the uh, on the Cloth and Chain Gnome Mastery here and have every four seconds regenerate uh, life equal to 1% of armor, and if I had that, then I would get like, like another thousand because I have like a hundred nine thousand armor on this, or like eleven 1 hundred. So that's another really important stat to look at. Now there's a lot of different items that allow you to do this. The other thing is make sure you have like things like endurance charge generation. So you know, taking nodes like um exor oh exorable sorry exorable. Um, is really useful because when you get hit you then reject you get uh, endurance charges and then you basically generate more you know life however there's a couple of other ways to get endurance charges as well and i'll show you as well okay so another way that you can generate endurance charges if you're in a character that doesn't natively have access to that sort of area is actually by you know getting the red dream so you can generate endurance charges on kill um, and basically this is dirt cheap, this jewel, this leaves like five chaos, really, really easy way to get endurance charges for regeneration and physical damage reduction and everything else in between. If you've got a crafted chest, you can get the implicit as well, gain endurance charges every so many seconds. So that's also something you can do. Um, otherwise, you know, you can always just go with the good old fashioned enduring cry and just buy it from, um, Lily and then basically run that as well. And you could potentially set that up on a Warcry setup, Call to Arms, which is what you do on like a Chieftain, for example. Um, so yeah, Enduring Cry is really cool to be able to get um, charges, uh, Endurance Charges. I think we underrate Endurance Charges defensively, they're really good, but they prop up your life regeneration rate. The other things to remember as well is running an Arrogance and Vitality setup can be really useful. Um, that little bit of life that you reserve, even though you might think you might need that extra 300 life, it'll actually be better to have like three or 400 life regeneration, which will keep you alive a lot longer and will also let you negate things like poison damage, chaos, caustic ground, all that sort of shit as well. And so you actually don't have to worry about ailment immunities as much if you can just regenerate more life than what the ailment immunity can do to you. Um, Anyway, those are that, that's that's my tip for life regeneration. And obviously, you know, there's other places where you can get regeneration. So Hearty is a really good node to take. 
Um, if you want to take a, a gamble and get robust, um, Golem's Blood is another place to sort of look for to get a lot of life regeneration out of the tree. Um, there are some other nodes here, Brink of Death, which people don't really use, but this could be really useful if you're running Petrified Blood characters, for example. Um, and then, you know, yeah, the world's basically Royce to, like, go crazy. Um, there might even be an argument from time again to run Eternal Youth. Who knows? Um, anyway, that's my basic tips on life regeneration, uh, and that's, yeah, tip number five, like, wherever you can get it, get it. Life regeneration is really good, and sometimes it's better to have life regeneration than it is to have that extra 1 million DPS. If you've got, like, 20 million DPS and you have to give up 1 million DPS for a thousand life regeneration or something like that, or, like, two or three hundred life regeneration, that can be the difference of your character walking out of a fight. And it takes like an extra two seconds to kill the boss, but you'll survive and you won't lose 10% of your XP, which for players that are like me, I hate dying, which is why I build such tanky characters. Anyway, that's my last tip that I'm going to run through. Okay, so I hope this video actually sort of helps everybody. If you're looking at like amping up your defenses a little bit and you want to get some ideas to do that, um, this is what I do when I'm putting builds together or when I'm looking at a build and I'm like, I can make that better, or I can make that more defensive, or if I'm dying from something, what I brainstorm to go, okay, how do I round the edge and basically add these particular stats in, like, am I dying from crit, am I dying from chaos, am I dying for yada 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 yada, or is the solution just more life regeneration and basically screw everything, we're just going to be an arc generator of life. Um, anyway, if you, like the, uh, if you like this video and this type of video, uh, drop me a like, drop me a sub to the channel, Make sure you follow the Twitch. Um, there's also the Discord as well. So heap this in the Discord. And I actually get some of my ideas to make videos from like this from the Discord. So post your questions and it'll either be a response in the Discord or it'll be a video that'll come out going, let's look at this in de detail now. Uh, anyway, until next time, um, stay safe and I'll see you guys later.